Seeing as it is 7.04 on Wednesday, July 29th, I will hereby call the meeting of the Norton Select Board to order. Uh, like the record showed that three members are present, uh, Michael Toole, Renee Deli, and Jack Conway. Uh, Brad Bramwell is not able to join tonight. Um, first and foremost, would like to thank uh, all the attendees for coming in tonight. Um, appreciate you making some time for us on uh, this beautiful, nicely cooled off Wednesday night when there's probably many other things you could be doing. Um, we will try to keep this brisk and move on, share as much information as we can, but ultimate, our ultimate goal here is to try to hear from you guys. We want to present some information, but the, the real goal of the evening is going to be hearing from, from you, the, the residents of the town, on your thoughts uh, for where the town hall and senior center buildings uh, should be located. So hopefully by the end of this, we have um, probably a little optimistic though for consensus, but hopefully we have the, uh, the emergence of a direction. So I am uh, going to share my screen. Hold on one moment while we do this. All right. Uh, can um, everybody see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I apologize for the pixelated Norton sign. That's the best one I could find. So we should probably hire somebody to do that. There you go. So a uh, brief rundown of how I see the evening going. Uh, call to order and welcome uh, is already done. So we're already halfway. We're already on our way here. I'm going to go over the ground rules for the evening, talk about why we're here, and then we're going to pass it off to Matt Wells from the public schools to talk about the athletic field complex, then Dinah O'Brien, chair of the permanent building committee, to uh, give a review of the town hall senior center projects, um, how they got to where they are today. Then it will go to Michael Viveros from DBBW Architects, who has helped us with the site selection study to review the options that we have and talk a bit about the process that we've gone through. Um, and then lastly, we will open things up for Q&A and public comment. So let's go to the ground rules. Oh, surprise. Um, typically, the thank you slide goes at the end. <laughs> Mix things up and do things my own way, uh, as you've probably noticed. Um, and the reason I want to put the thank you at the front is we have close to 50 people that have made time on a Wednesday night to come and be an engaged part of the community. Whether you are for these projects, against these projects, ambivalent, you are here to be engaged and to learn and to provide feedback. And for me, there is nothing better than having an engaged group of residents uh, working on something. It means you care. Uh, we might not always agree, but the fact that people care uh, is, is really, really important to me. So uh, from on behalf of the select board, PBC, uh, public schools, uh, everyone in town hall, thank you for coming out tonight, and uh, we'll try to make this worth your time. Now, oh. <clears throat> now onto the ground rules. These are standard things that I try to, to do in every meeting, but respect all voices, be open to new and different ideas. Let's check any assumptions that we may have at the door, such as it is the virtual door. Um, listen to understand and question for clarity. And that's an important one for me. I think a lot of times in the meetings that I'm in, uh, people listen to respond, not necessarily to understand. Um, and I think that that's a, a key point of uh, having a powerful dialogue is listen to think about what's being said and to understand how it's being presented. Um, when we get to the questions and public comments section, will be after the presentations are complete, we will be enabling the Q&A feature that you see in the middle of the screen. Uh, that is actually live throughout this process. So you should be able to submit uh, questions as we go along if there's something that you want to know about. Um, we will review them at the end. Also, um, you'll be able to raise your hand through the participant field. Let me make sure that that's, uh, that is active. Uh, more. Uh, Karen, can we make sure that that's, that's turned on? It is, Jack. I can okay. see it. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'll monitor it. Great. Thank you, Shelley. 
Uh, so again, um, we'll open the raise your hand feature for uh, the tail end of this. Uh, and again, uh, I think our intent is to try to be here till the uh, question piece of feedback is, is heard and gone through. So, uh, and the last note here, um, this is intended to be a discussion on where the, the buildings go, not necessarily the merits or the costs, although the costs will be discussed because they are an important part of the site selection. Um, there will be ample time in the future before these projects uh, get approved um, to hold those in possession where we can talk about the, the cost, the design, the programming, all that. Um, you'll absolutely have opportunities galore um, before we get to a vote and to clarify in order to move this forward, it is a vote um, at the polls as well as town meeting. So you'll have uh, two opportunities to vote uh, yay or nay on these projects. Um, right. So quick, why are we here? Uh, and no, I don't mean cosmically, although in the last four months, I bet all of us have wondered to some extent uh, just what is going on in the world. Um, but these are why we're here. Uh, town hall conceptual rending provided by uh, DBVW from 2018-2019. Uh, the proposed senior center that was rendered by BH&A uh, design firm. The athletic complex, which I apologize for being so pixelated, uh, planned by Gale and Associates. And to go through the site selection survey. I'm going through these quickly because Dinah and Michael will um, touch on them in much greater detail than I would be able to do and speak much more intelligently. Um, but that's why we're here. We have had these projects for uh, Dinah several years at this point um, to get to this point, and we would like to be able to move these forward to a public vote. Um, I think the, the projects themselves warrant that up or down indication from the townspeople. So, and that's why we're here. We need to make a decision on where these projects will go in order to help refine the design and the cost estimating before we make a final recommendation to you, the voters, and ultimately you guys vote on the outcome. Okay. So why now? And I think this is a, a real important question. With all the uncertainty economically um, and just health-wise around the world, this does not seem like the best time to propose these projects, and I understand that. I think about it when, uh, say, a young couple is starting out and thinking about having kids. Um, and the, added, the advice that my wife and I got was, if you wait for the right time, it's never the right time. At a certain point, um, you need to take a leap of faith that things are going to get better um, and you can make two. So the need for a new town hall and a senior center has not gone away. Every year, these buildings get older. They start to fall down. There's more leaks. The roof sags more. Um, there, I'm sure the building commissioner will be able to speak uh, in far more detail about the roof of the senior center that dates back to, I think, the mid to late 1800s. Um, the sad conditions that the um, town hall employees need to be in, the fact that even pre-pandemic, we were no longer able to meet in that building uh, due to inadequate meeting conditions and not being able to meet uh, ADA compliance, which for a governmental body that is tasked with enforcing ADA code, the fact that our buildings themselves are not ADA compliant seems a bit uh, disingenuous to me and really hard to build credibility that way. We need to plan now for the future. And this is an important thing to note that if we were to vote for these and say sometime in 2021, it's still several years before the projects are complete and we start seeing the impact to our tax bill, 2023, 2024. This is, it's, it's never going to be cheaper than it is now. Uh, we've already seen cost escalation from the last time these projects were discussed in February and March of 2019. And if we were to do this again in a year, it would go up even more. Um, we can kick the can only so far, and I think we're already seeing the impact of not having acted sooner, say in the, in the late 90s when costs were lower. Um, sooner or later, um, it's time to pay the piper, and I, uh, we think that now is the time to make a push for this. We owe it to the townspeople to vote on these projects. Um, Beth Rossi, who heads up the Senior Center and the Health and Human Services for the town, 
gave a very impassioned plea uh, at, at several meetings about just what it means for the senior center uh, and the sense of community that it provides. And man, I can't think of a more resonant time than now about the importance of community when for so long well, we were at home with, with our families, not able to connect with people in a meaningful way. And I'm one of those uh, Pollyanna optimists that think before too long, we're gonna be able to get back to that where we can we can shake hands and hug and um, hang out with people and knit or do Zumba or whatever it is that we wanna do, play pickleball. Apparently that's something that um, the seniors like to do. Um, I think it's time to put this forward rather than hang, having it hang over our head uh, like a sword of Damocles, it's time to put these up and let you guys have have a say on if you want them or not. And lastly, um, we've talked a lot about trying to bring business and industry to Norton and how uh, I, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a majority, but there's a pretty common sentiment amongst at least the townspeople, if not external people, that Norton is not business friendly. Um, we see that with the lack of sewer infrastructure in town, the roadways are small, so for me, if we aren't ourselves willing to invest in the town, um, how can we possibly convince good business, good industry, that they should come in here and be part of our community? Um, that's my little spiel. And wrapping up quickly, where do we go from here? Uh, well, the reason why this meeting was called in such short order is we've committed to providing an answer to the PBC uh, at our Thursday, August 6th meeting. Um, they will then take that recommendation and meet on August 10th to start planning for the public information sessions that I referenced earlier. These are the ones where we get to kick the tires on the programming, the merits, the cost, all that becomes fair game, uh, and it should. This is not uh, an insignificant investment. There will be impact to tax bills. Um, it, it needs to be fully vetted, fully understood. Uh, I welcome any and all criticism and uh, we're not gonna shirk any answers. Um, and we've talked together at, at past meetings that if we don't know what the answer is, we will tell you that. We're not gonna make up an answer that sounds good and then walk away. We're gonna tell you we don't know, but we commit to getting you that answer and sharing it publicly. Um, for me, that, that's about building trust and um, that's, that's where we're going to do things. And lastly, once those informations are held, we will um, be moving forward to the vote. Um, ultimately, you guys do hold the power. In order to move forward with the design and construction of these projects in a meaningful way, voters are going to need to approve a debt exclusion at both a town meeting and a town election. Uh, and I believe the one of those needs to come first. I don't recall which one, town manager. Um, you can chime in and let us know, but they both need to pass. If it passes at one and not the other, they don't go forward. Um, and I believe that is it for me. Uh, so at this point, I will turn it over to Mr. Matt Wells at the public school to provide a little bit of background on the athletic complex. And um, so we are not looking for a location for these. This is set, the school committee has voted on it, but we figured while we were discussing these projects, it would be um, good of us to introduce this on a, on a wider scale, make sure that people are aware and get some context behind that. So thank you for listening. I turn it over to you, Matt. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so the field study project, I started here about two, uh, two years ago in July of 2018. And one of the first things I was briefed on was the field study, um, the field project that was going, that wanted to go forward. I believe at that time it had been a topic of discussion for about three years. Um, and we, at that time, uh, were starting to move into where we decided it was time to put together a committee to look at this. So about a year and a half ago, uh, a committee was formed of um, uh, community stakeholders and town officials uh, to start talking about the fields project. Uh, we moved forward with a, um, a capital item for the field study. We brought on board Gale Associates, and then last summer we put, started putting together a number of different plans for the field study. Um, during that time, uh, we worked with, with community members and again with the committee and came up with a number of different plans. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, try and share my screen here. Uh, give me a moment. 
Um, a lot of people, I've had some people inquire as to where we actually keep the plans on the site. Um, so if you go to the uh, uh, Concord Public, the Norman Public Schools website, um, and in the right-hand corner, there's a community tab. If you mouse over that, you'll see that the athletic complex pops up as uh, one of the first items on the list. Um, and I can't seem to get this window. Hold on, move this out of the way. Um, when you go to the athletic uh, complex field study site, uh, we have a lot of information on here for people to look at. Um, the third item down is the proposals options. And you can see we have developed proposals A through G with a, uh, a double F option. So we've been working at this for a long time. These options were all developed with community input. Uh, we had, I think, eight different committee meetings where we presented these and three different uh, public forums. Uh, we took input from the community and we came up with the, the recommended option G. Um, so if you click on this on the website, <clears throat> it'll bring up a summary section. Um, but I like to go down at the, uh, the bottom of the summary section, you have to actually print on, uh, click on the printable schematics and the printable complete financials. A little bit easier to read. You can zoom in on this and take a look at it. Um, so here are our fields uh, and the, the schematic design. With this design, we have decided that the uh, natural grass softball field to the left of the high school and the natural grass baseball field will not be renovated because those two fields are in pretty good shape. So we're really addressing <clears throat> the football field uh, behind the L, the pit field, and we got some tennis courts over here that we're going to be putting in. So the, the football field is a, a turf field with a new track that goes around it, new lights. The field is capable for football. <clears throat> soccer, um, lacrosse, any of the field sports that we can do will be able to be done on that field. Uh, lights will surround that field. The largest part of the turf project is right behind the L where we're going to have a turf baseball field, a turf softball field, and then a turf multi-purpose field, which again, football, soccer, lacrosse, and many other sports that we can do. Plus these fields can kind of be cut into thirds for um, younger sports um, so they can have multiple fields there for that. This is a turf field, this is lit. Um, the tennis courts that are being put in are not lit and the pit field, which is also a turf field, is also not lit. So these two uh, areas we decided not to light, but are part of the project. Um, if you um, go back to the website, you can click on the uh, financial plan. Um, and looking at the financial plan, the first page gives you the sum. Oh, I think I clicked on the wrong one here. Um, so if you go to the printable complete financials, we're looking at uh, 8667499 If you have any interest in what is actually behind that, if you scroll down within this, form, this uh, document, each page covers the different pieces of the synthetic field. Uh, so this is the football. The first one is the football field and the eight lane track. And it's very detailed budgeting and costing. Uh, the next page takes you into the um, the turf field behind, which is the baseball softball turf field behind the yell. Uh, the next page is the pit field. And then the final page is the costing for the tennis court. Uh, so this, yeah, this uh, Plan G was the uh, the proposal that the school committee uh, voted on and, and feels is the best proposal to move forward. Uh, we think it meets all the needs for the schools going forward. Uh, we The field behind the uh, the Yale school uh, is a very rough field at this point. Uh, it was initially put in with uh, a lot of fill. There's a lot of uh, organic uh, stumps in there that are starting to break down, and we're getting a lot of dips um, and sinkholes out there, which uh, is eventually going to end up in a situation where it's just not safe for students. Um, so we want to develop that field so it becomes a, a multi-purpose field, increases our, our playability for everyone uh, within the town as well as our, our sports programs, um, and, uh, and as well to the de develop the pit and the football field so that we have a, a full complex at the high school. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, can you just clarify? Uh, when did the planning for this project start? Is this a, a recent thing? No, this was a, a my, I've only been here two years, but I understand it was about five years ago that they began the work on this project. 
Um, it was when I started, we were really at that point, um, or the schools were really at that point where they were ready to move forward <clears throat> and develop that committee to start start really putting some time into into this project. Okay, so we, we did do, uh, three three public forums. I believe it was eight school committee meetings where it was presented at, um, as well as uh, sharing the information with a lot of different people. Um, thank you, Matt. For me, that's an important important point to get out is that this is not something that was rushed through with very little consideration in the past year. This has been years and years of planning by the school committee um, and the administration of Warren Public Schools. So thank you very much for, for sharing that update. Uh, and I know you guys, you might have to drop off in about five minutes, but we have uh, Aaron and Wade are gonna hang around for us um, and answer any questions. Uh, we'll probably take Wade with us, but we'll, we'll leave you, Aaron. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you, Matt. Uh -huh. I can just um, kind of just reiterate what Matt said. So this is not a, a project that is, um, you know, that just started. It's absolutely been something that's really been researched and um, it's a detailed plan. There's been a lot of discussion about it, but I think um, it's important to recognize, as Matt said, that the field at this point um, often in, in Wade probably can speak more to this than I can, but um, the fields for a lot of the sports are just not conducive. So um, we have had to kind of utilize outside fields to allow students to play sports. And um, the tennis courts that are at the middle school are starting to wear, I think if I'm not mistaken, the tennis courts are about 20 years old at the middle school and they're becoming um, really, um, what's a good word? They, they're, they're really not sufficient any longer or, or won't be um, for much longer as an option for um, the tennis courts to be used for a sporting season. So there's a lot of need. I think that Matt, thank you for sharing the website. I'm not sure if um, the community knows it's a really comprehensive website. So I think all of the questions, if you have any, will be answered. Um, if you kind of look at that, there's a list of who was on the committee. Um, there was all of the plans that were reviewed. You can kind of see um, the number of options that the school committee had and, and kind of the decision that was made. So. Certainly, um, I had shared this, Jack, just so um, the community knows if there are questions that are not kind of discovered on that web page, then use the Let's Talk option on the website. Uh, and you can reach out to Dr. Bayetta directly. Um, you can also sort of send a message to facilities, that's Wade's office, to sort of ask questions, and also athletics, which is Aaron's office, to ask questions. So they're all, um, you know, there's all different options to find out information. Yeah, I do want to also mention with, with the fields that um, with this renovation of the fields, uh, it becomes a, 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 a very, it'll become a very popular spot for rentals. Um, we know that um, Wheaton, had, we have been in conversations with Wheaton, they have said that they would be interested in rental. We know we can, uh, with this renovation, it gives us the ability to run tournaments, which have a lot of revenue generation for the schools and for the town. Um, uh, any type of rentals where they do, uh, they do tournaments, even if we're not hosting that tournament, where they're, they're using the field. That brings um, people into town who will spend money at local businesses, and and we can certainly run. There's definitely a rental component that goes with it that can help offset any uh, future maintenance costs in the field, or potentially even uh, reduce fees for our students. Awesome! Thank you so much, Matt and Carolyn. Um, any other questions or points that the panelists want to point out? before we let Matt and Carolyn um, and Wade dip out. Seeing none, uh, thank you guys. We'll turn it over to Dinah to provide some history on the Town Hall Senior Center projects. Dinah, please take it away. Thank you, Jack, and good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Dinah O'Brien. I'm chairman of the building committee, and Part of these projects is the construction of the new Town Hall Council on Aging proposal. These are projects that began back in 2016 uh, when the building committee first started considering New Town Hall COA and have proceeded to this date. 
we are very happy to have brought to the Board of Selectmen four proposed sites. We did look at 17 sites, all within a three-mile radius of area. I believe that the town would purchase within that area. And um, that would either hold one of the buildings or both of the buildings simultaneously. When we're looking at the town hall for just for a small bit of history, the first time improvements to the town hall were discussed by the town um, and unfortunately not acted on where it was in 1995. And it has just continued to progress from then. Um, the majority of the town hall is in a 109 year old gymnasium that used to be, you know, for the college, you know, the which is the Wind in the Pine School across the street. It was added on to in 1997 to give the fire department some space. And the reno first renovation and code compliance was required in 1998, 1988, I'm sorry, and then was mandated in 1993. Currently, just to give you a quick overview of the town hall, um, it is woefully lacking in fire protection. There's a large fire load in the basement. There are open chases throughout the building that would allow smoke and fire to easily expand. The use of space heaters and extension cords is prohibited by law, but is a common practice because the HVAC system is antiquated and does not work properly. Um, it cannot be balanced and it cannot be controlled. The assembly area, for the town of Norton within the town hall is limited to 30 seats in the Board of Selectmen's room. And that was recently um, shut down because of obstructed access and egress and non-compliance with the mandated 36 inch width between rows. There is um, lot, a lot excuse me, a uh, lack of natural light. There's, there are not enough bathrooms and fixtures for the public and for the staff. The only facilities are on the first floor and therefore not accessible to those working on the second. The state required mandates in 93 to meet the ADA requirements and unfortunately those have not been addressed to date. And the real, um, the real cost to the town right now is that there is no insulation in the exterior walls, floor, or roof of that building. So our energy bills are becoming quite out of hand. The roof assembly is outdated. It leaks and it puddles. To step from the frying pan into the fire, your Council on Aging is in a 125-year-old timber frame building that has had numerous uses and lives within the town of Norton. It has been a fire station and it has been a school. It is now a council on aging. There is no fire protection within the building. The assembly area is too small for the current occupancy load when the people come and use the facility. The accessibility does not meet the state requirements for handicapped accessibility. There is little or no insulation. The HVAC system, excuse me, is in an unprotected attic that has a sagging roof because of the 125 year old timbers that are holding the structure up. There is no parking available other than the 10 to 12 spaces that are allotted on the side of the building. So the town has had to rely on the kindness of a local merchant to provide additional parking. However, that, that does not address access and egress. So these are two of the main buildings within the town that are in quite a state of disrepair. The building committee began to look at them, as I said, in 2016. In 2019, we narrowed down 17 sites. Pardon me, title? Yes. Um, I believe your papers are ruffling up against the microphone. Oh, okay. 
Any other right. background noise as you're going through? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we've, um, we've, as I said, we narrowed it down to 17, 17 sites. The building committee went through these at length and narrowed them down to four options, which Mr. Barris from D um, BBW will be presenting. Those we have sent over to the Board of Selectmen in February. Unfortunately, um, everyone knows what happened after February. We went into a lockdown situation, which has lengthened this process, and now we are here hoping the selectmen will get really good impact and feedback from the community so that they can make the best possible decision as to the location of the project. Be happy to answer any questions so far, but Jack, back to you. Excellent. Thank you, Donna. Oh, put my video back on. Uh, appreciate that. That's that's great. And again, you, you guys have been working on this for several years, right? This is the culmination of a, a multi-year effort at this point. Yes, it is. Um, we do, you do have a very dedicated building committee and um, we've done an excellent job, if I can say so myself, and really uh, need to, uh, to get some feedback from the community. Absolutely. Uh, I think this would be a great opportunity to, to recognize their efforts. So in addition to yourself, Dinah, there's uh, Jim Slattery, there's Bob Medeiros, um, Brian Bechet and oh man, it's not Kevin. It's Mark. Mark. And Mark's last name is. I don't you remember. It, it does. No, I don't. Right. Yeah, it's been there. All right, Mark. Even though Mark, <coughs> Mark Gershaw. Gershaw. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Well, we may not remember your name. We value your contribution. Your he, he is our secretary and has kept us on track throughout this entire process. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, so I think at this point, we'll turn it over to uh, Michael Viveros from DBBW to talk us through the site selection and how we got from 17 to 4 and what those four properties are. Take it away, Michael. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Dinah. And first of all, I just want to see if I can uh, get things up on my screen here. And... Uh, is everyone seeing the Norton Site Selection Study? Is, is, that, is everyone seeing that? Okay. Yes. Yep, that's all. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, as Dinah touched on, we, we, we studied 17 sites. Um, the sites that we studied included um, parcels owned by the town of Norton, uh, privately owned parcels, including parcels owned by Wheaton College. Um, in reviewing the 17 sites, we looked at parcel size, uh, wetlands, um, suitable building area on these sites, um, potential environmental contamination. Uh, we, we, we thought about the proximity of the various sites to the center of town. Uh, we looked at zoning um, and multiple other factors. Um, over a series of meetings and public presentations, a number of sites were shortlisted down to four, which we'll be presenting tonight. Uh, of these four sites, there's really, you're gonna see that there are five options. Uh, two of the options accommodate a new town hall and a community center, senior center. Um, two of the options accommodate a new community center only. And, uh, and the last option accommodates a new town hall only. So this, I, I think you're all probably quite familiar with the town and probably have a good feel for, for where the various sites are. And I'm gonna start with the site number one, which is on uh, uh, um, uh, Reservoir Street. So this is a site that's uh, 34 acres. Uh, it's, owned, it's owned by Wheaton College. The, the site is uh, heavily wooded, uh, uh, but does have frontage on the Norton Reservoir. Um, just a few, few sites from, from uh, Reservoir Street. As again, again, as I mentioned, it's heavily wooded. Um, one of the real good, great features of this site is it can accommodate both town hall and a community center. And in fact, it's large enough that it can also accommodate future construction, additional buildings uh, in, 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 in coming years. Um, uh, fronting the reservoir, it also pre presents options for uh, future public recreation. The advantages of the site, I'm just gonna kind of go to this next slide. So again, this will give you a strong feeling for how, for how big the, the site is. Um, the layout that you're seeing on the site isn't so much 
intended to be a design, but really just to help us understand how things, you know, how things will fit, whether the site is large enough, and also to help us um, develop uh, uh, budgets for, for developing the site and, and constructing the buildings. Um, uh, one of the major advantages of this site, again, is its size, um, that it can accommodate uh, the, the two buildings. Um, its frontage is also one of the major advantages. Its frontage is on the Norton Reservoir. Um, its disadvantages are its, 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 its distance from Norton Center, um, uh, also that it's on a secondary uh, town road. Um, and I'm gonna run through these relatively quickly, so. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we prepared uh, budgets for each of these sites um, and for each of the budgets, it's not only we, the, the budgets include uh, construction costs for, in this case, for the two buildings, for the site improvements, it includes uh, budget numbers for furniture, as well as soft costs uh, and soft costs are everything from architecture and engineering fees to uh, owners project manager fees, um, surveying, uh, reimbursable expenses for printing. Uh, there's all kinds of things that go, that fall into um, soft costs. Uh, there's also contingencies as part of soft, soft costs and also escalation, which is, you know, uh, costs that, that um, address uh, inflation as because this project wouldn't start uh, for, for a few years. Um, the, so the budget for this option for this site is 27 million Nine hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars, and again, that's total project budget, hard and soft costs. Site number two is on is on Mansfield Street. Um, this is a five point seven acre site. It too fronts the Norton Reservoir. Um, much of the site uh, is 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 wet. Um, you can see that in, in red here is the outline of the site, but much of it is is wet. So even though there's five point seven acres much of it is not buildable. Um, but, but there is uh, plenty of area on this site for, for a new um, community center. And so these are just a few images taken from Mansfield Ave. Actually, the one to the right is from the adjacent lot, looking into, into the parcel. So this is just a layout for how the community center might, might fit, um, it's, you know, with its parking and um, uh, space for, for an on-site septic system. You know, we address utilities and other things in these layouts. The advantages of this site is, it's, uh, is that it's located on an arterial road. Um, it can comfortably accommodate the community center. Um, it's frontage on the Norton Reservoir, I think is also a benefit. Um, a little bit of a disadvantage is its, its distance from Norton Center. Um, it's, uh, this can, depending on outlook, if this, it's, it, it's a standalone facility and not adjacent to other town buildings, and that might be a disadvantage. Um, and then there's also the cost to purchase the site for, for just the one building as a disadvantage, potential disadvantage. Um, the total budget for this, for this option, and again, this is all hard and soft costs, would be ten million seven hundred and sixty four thousand dollars. We move on to site three, which which is really just a portion of the Norton Middle School property. Um, even though the site is uh, seventy two acres, um, we would be taking just a small portion of it. Um, it's it would be the portion that that basically fronts onto uh, West Main Street. And is to the left of the of the drive lane as you head into into the middle school. Um, these are just a few images of the site, and I think if you look all the way to the right, you'll see a pic. That's the entrance to the middle school, and the site would really be just be falling just behind um, just behind the roadway, fronting onto 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 the roadway. Um, in order to create enough a space for the community center, which is what would happen on uh, with this option. Um, what would happen is that the, both the park and the, the playground would need to be relocated. I think this, will, this, this slide should give you a better, better sense of, 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 of where we're proposing that the uh, community center could go. Um, again, you can see it's just to the left as you, as you drive to in, into the uh, middle school site.
The advantages of this site is, again, that it's located on a major arterial road. Um, we think that it could probably benefit, you know, the, com the community center, the senior center could, you know, benefit from being adjacent to the Norton Middle School. The disadvantages are clearly having to move the park and the playground. Um, and another, another issue that was discussed was that West Main Street is uh, that the, um, at, at times of the day, this is a heavily, very heavily trafficked area. The total uh, budget for this site, again, both hard and soft costs, would be $10,173,000. And Mike, just to clarify, that $10,100,000 does not include making up for the displaced playground and uh, Tricentennial Park, correct? did budget some money for that mm -hmm. for relocation but not for purchase of a site mm -hmm. site four um is essentially where existing town hall now is now along with the library the fire station the police station and public works um this this option involves the existing Norton uh, owned land, as well as the purchase of an adjacent site, which is which is essentially surrounded by Norton public lands. Um, this option includes both a new um, town hall as well as a senior center. So this is just a few images of the site, which I'm sure you're all quite familiar with. And, and so this is just one pass at, at how the, a new town hall in, in the community center um, would fit on the site. Um, in this option, what we're really proposing to do is not just build a new town hall and community center, but really to build a municipal center. And so the, 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 the layout and the budgets created for this option, you know, not only address those, the, the two new buildings, but really, really look at um, reworking all of the uh, most of the uh, site improvements as they are now there would basically be you know all new parking all new roadways into the site major improvements to the utilities to the site I mean it would really be a reimagining of, of this site mm -hmm. the advantages of this site are that it can accommodate town hall and the community center. Um, it allows for creation of a municipal town center with a uh, town hall, the community center, library, um, police, fire, and also the library, as well as library park. Um, it's within the Norton town center. Um, the money's, some of the money's being spent um, would improve the site and benefit the existing facilities. Um, we think you may, the town may find efficiencies um, in terms of just operations with operating on one site. Um, uh, and while, while the land purchase is, is required, uh, the, the added site um, you know, does allow for, for, um, for, both, for constructing both buildings on one site. Um, there's also so the potential for walking trails in the nearby woodlands, um, another option. One of the significant disadvantages to this, this site is just constructing the improvements is going to, it is going to lead to, it will lead to, um, you know, temporary uh, disruption on the site. So um, as we develop the cost, but the budget for this site, one of the things we really had to look at is, you know, is, 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 is keeping town operations fully functioning. And so, you know, it'll, it'll take a little bit longer to construct things on this site. And, you know, some monies will have to be spent, um, you know, with, with temporary construction, you know, providing places for people to park and thinking about, you know, how people will get from parking to the buildings. And so, you know, in developing the budget, you know, those, those items were, were uh, um, thought about. Mm -hmm. um, other things that happen, uh, you know, with cost for this option is that this option involves uh, um, demolishing a portion of the existing town hall. And then we've included over half a million dollars to, you know, 
as we demolish a part of the building, there's uh, a number of improvements that will need to be made to the facades and, 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 and other things. And so we've included over half a million dollars for that. Um, and again, as I mentioned, uh, there's, there's additional funds on, for this project relative to the others related to temporary construction and keeping town hall operations uh, you know, fully functioning. Um, the, the budget for this option, option four, is uh, $33,140,000. Then I'm going to go to the last option, which is which is is in some way, is in many ways similar to to option four. Um, it's on the same site. It would still it would involve the purchase of the additional land, um, but it would include town hall only and not not the community center. Um, this option, the budget for this option is uh, twenty three million six hundred eighty six thousand dollars. And that, that's the that's the overview of the of the four sites and five options. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, Mike. Um, could you share the um, summary page that has been developed? There you go. Thank you very much. So maybe we can leave that up when we go through the uh, the Q and A, if you don't mind, to help people refer to um, to the sites. Uh, an additional thing I wanted to point out that was discussed uh, and brought up by the town's conservation agent, the Reservoir Street area, because it is wetlands, um, it could potentially be eligible for some grants if there were to be um, walking trails put in. So there are some additional further benefits there if that was uh, selected as uh, an option. Okay. Uh, anything else from the panelists before we move to the question and answer public comment period? No? All right. Um, so, uh, Renee, I think you're facilitating this part. If you want to call on people, do you have the ability to unmute folks? I do. So um, this is going to be uh, Greg Vincent has not only raised his hand, but he also uh, made a comment in respect to site one is not zone village commercial. It's residential R60. So Greg, um, if your phone is unmuted, you will be able to speak if you have a question or a comment. Hi, uh, yes. Uh, recently, I brought to the attention of the town that there was mistakes on the zoning map and the zoning map has since been corrected. Back in 2017, there was a attempt to um, take that whole left-hand side of Reservoir Street and change it from residential to village commercial. Um, that did not pass. That did not happen. Those properties were, were specifically removed from the list of properties that were converted to village commercial in 2017. Um, I brought that to the intention. They since have had the maps changed and corrected, and a bunch of the other properties were actually only partially village commercial, dating back to the late 70s where it was just a 400-foot buffer zone in from 140. So the Wheaton property on Reservoir Street that you are selecting is in the middle of a residential neighborhood on, like you say, narrow secondary roads, and it is zoned R60, not village commercial. To attempt to change that, you would be spot zoning, which is not allowed. Um, the adjacent property is owned by uh, Patrick Chung of the, of, the, of the Patriots, who just bought that $1.2 million house. And the other side property is owned by the Fernandez clan, and uh, one of those is also residential, the part that's on Reservoir Street. And the other one that's actually fronted on Mansfield Ave, only 450 feet in from Mansfield Ave is Village Commercial. The rest is, of that 24 acres is residential as well. You, that's smack dab in the middle of a residential neighborhood, and uh, it's zoned residential. Um, so I don't know why. Everybody's looking at that property. You can't build a town hall in a quiet neighborhood on the secondary roads in an area that's zoned residential. Why would you want to? You need to be on a main road. 
You need to be in there the center of town. You do not need to be disrupting, disrupting a neighborhood. And hey, Greg, if I can just follow up on that, because there are a couple options with uh, Reservoir Street. One is to have both buildings and one is just to have the community center. Um, it sounds like your comments are in respect to both of those buildings being there. Do you share that opinion for the community center only in that area? No, for both. I don't want either of them. It's a residential area. I think the, along 140, that that property is right. I think down by the middle school, that's great. And I think the main street is great. They, they, both, they both should be on a main road, easily accessible, not on some tiny little residential road that already has too much traffic. And if you know, Mansfield is building a major complex at the other end of Reservoir Street, which will only have access on and off of Reservoir Street. It won't have one, Route 140 access. And I realize that's Mansfield, but it's 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 Reservoir Street. Uh, so okay. there's a lot, a lot of things to consider. The narrow the narrow road, the traffic on the road, the lack of sidewalks. I mean, geez, I don't know why we never got any sidewalks. I remember when my kids were first going to school, they says, well, I had this big argument about busing. You had to be a mile away. Otherwise, you can walk to school. Well, <laughs> you going to let your kids walk down Reservoir Street? Anyways, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, Greg. Appreciate your feedback. Yeah, um, I just wanted to let the architect know that he needs to go look at the corrected zoning maps. That it's it's all everything surrounding that area is R sixty. Whether it's and I, I think that's a I think that's a valid point because they were looking at maps that weren't updated. Um, again, that would be another task. If this site site were selected, that would be another task, another approval that would be needed. Um, yeah, I mean, if there are both, any any changes into the uh, the zoning district, both properties, Fernandes and Wheaton property, they're they're residential. Okay, great. Thank you, Greg. Okay. Um, and then Jack, I just want to mention Michael Harrington um, provided two comments. Um, I don't see his hand raised, though, so I'll just read these. Um, the first, given being that Site Four gives Norton a community center and all the town part departments get improvements. Um, he feels like that would, that's what he'd like to see for our town, especially the walking trails. And that was site four um, is the, uh, an order of preference, the first preference from the PBC. Um, and he also added that he'd hate to see such a residential neighborhood disrupted by commercial buildings as in site one, which is the reservoir street we were just talking about with Craig. Um, there is a, a counter opinion to that, that, uh, um, Kathleen Rodriguez, I don't see her hand raised either, so I'll read this on her behalf. Um, that she likes res Reservoir Street site, especially because it has area for future building if needed. Um, it's also less congested than the other sites and appears to be a more peaceful area. Um, I do see uh, a hand up, so I'm, I'm going to pause there and go to Pat Tarantino. Um, Pat, if you're unmuted, you should be able to speak now. Unmute. All right. I think I'm on. Yep, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, I think I understand what they're saying about the reservoir. It's too bad because it would be nice to be along the water. But um, I think that putting it by the middle school would be a big mistake. It's so busy there any time of the day when the cars are coming in and out from the school. I think that would just be a real hazard. Even if you put, as I was seeing, the layout another entrance in and out of there it just it's really bad um I, I like the option four which is the number one choice of putting them all together right there where the existing town hall and fire department are now and if you put some excuse me some walking paths in there too it would be lovely sounds good to me and you said site four pat is that what you said Yes, uh, the first preference. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh -huh. um, just just to let you guys know, we will have um, a polling at the end of this as well, where you'll have an opportunity to vote, and then that'll just allow us to collect the the information um, and take it away for the board of selectmen to next week for our consideration. Thank you, Pat. Anything else? Um, you talking to me? Yes. Um, with that site on um with the town hall that first option that would i'm assuming have to be two stories and are elevators included in that it's probably a dumb question michael do you want to unmute yourself
for, for the reservoir site, honestly, there's enough space to build a single story town hall that that's that, that would, would fit that way. Um, but in the option, as we've shown it, it's, it's proposed as a two story town hall and it would include include, a, you know, an elevator, a full, fully com ADA compliant elevator. Mm -hmm. What about the um, senior center? The senior center would be one story in that option. Oh, in all right. Excuse me, Pat, were you speaking of site number four, which is the municipal campus? Uh, hold on one second, Dinah, I just uh, unmuted her. Pat, can you unmute your phone again? Sure, Renee, thanks a lot. Just <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were done and then she threw out that question. <laughs> Say it again. All right, now I have a short-term memory loss here. What were you asking again? Uh, Pat, it's Dinah. Were you uh, were you speaking about elevators needed on Site Four, which is the municipal campus proposal? Yes. Yeah, both buildings would be two stories. Both would have elevators, and both would be fully ADA compliant. Now, would that mean? I mean, there's only three people in this in the center now. You've got um, Beth and Sosi and Kathy. How are they going to be able to man? two floors in that area I think that I think um, staffing levels are something that we would address a little bit farther down the road when prior to a town meeting when the, we actually go to vote on the pro you know the proposals up or down right now we're just trying to select a site but so it is something thing. that would have to be addressed but these are the kind of things Dinah that from past meetings you know, the people in town are going to get up and say, okay, so we did this, we're building the building, and now we're going to have to add people to man it, which is health insurance, salaries. So on top of paying for the building itself, we're now adding on to the manpower to man it. So it's, it's one of those things that sneak up and bite you on the backside when you go to the town and you say, this is what we want to do, and you get it done, and they're scraping by to get the money together, and then you slap them the next year with saying, oh, and now we need to hire five new people. So I can field that one for now. Um, so this has been in front of mind as we've been going through the process, Pat, um, to make sure that we understand what the operational impact is going to be in terms of cost. Um, these buildings are bigger. Uh, while they will be more energy efficient, there's likely that there is going to be increased utility costs. There's going to be more area, so there's more cleaning. There's more space, so that could lead to new services. Um, we don't know what that looks like yet. Um, those will come in the future information sessions. Um, the I can I believe I can speak on behalf of the select board. The intent is not to. Uh, play cute with any of these items. We want to be fully open and transparent about what the future holds to the best of our ability. Um, we're not going to shy away from any of these questions and we're going to do our best to make sure that we have solid fact-based um, answers when we come back to you guys um, in a few months. And I apologize. I didn't mean to make it sound like I thought you were playing cute. I'm just thinking in past experience of other meetings, these are the things that come up later on that they say, well, why didn't you tell us to begin with? Absolutely. And, it's like you buy a printer and then uh, you have to buy the ink and the ink is yeah, free. Every month I have to buy ink? I have to buy paper too? What the heck? Um, <laughs> but, the, you know, in, now that you're saying that, the other one that I liked was the one on 140. That one, you have a main road. Although there's traffic, there's not a lot of in and outs the way there are at the middle school. And you have the reservoir there. That would be lovely. So I think I changed my mind. So, so the one on 140 being zero Reservoir Street? No, nope, not the one on Reservoir Street. The one that's by um, the Subway Plaza there. It's Mansfield Avenue. Now. Okay, okay. Right. Because that's right there. It's open. It's easy to get in and out of. And you've got the water. We can put kayaks in there. Thanks so, my mind, that would be my vote. 
So, Pat, just to clarify that, that is uh, from the order of preference. Um, Dinah or Michael, can you go to that, that slide? Um, that's a second option that would show uh, Town Hall at 70 East Main Street and the Community Center at 116 to 120 Mansfield. The one on Mansfield Ave. I, I don't, I'm not seeing the, um, the chart. Let's see. Oh, did I lose it? The chart's I not think, going. I think they just put it back up. But, but it has, um, it is what the Permanent Building Committee voted as the second, um, their second selection, which has Town Hall essentially located where it is now and then um, 140 for the community yes. center. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can unmute me now if you'd like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can raise your hand again. Please. I will. You still have an opportunity to talk. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, Jack, I'm going to go to uh, Joe Parker. Um, he's raised his hand. So, Joe, um, if you unmute your phone, you should be able to speak. I uh, should be. Can you hear yep, me? Yep, we hear you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I would also like to uh, voice my preference for what's uh, order of preference number two on the list, the 4A and uh, sites 4A and 2 combination. Um, part of that is that I'm concerned with everything being on site number four, that it's going to be a challenge in terms of, of crowding. I, I mean, I understand the desire for a municipal campus concept, um, but typically those are sort of town offices and, and you know, uh, services and things like that. So in my mind, the community center is sort of a, a not a great fit for that. Uh, the other thing that I'm concerned about there is that the community center is kind of being jammed in there and, and the fact that that's the only plan that has a two-story community center instead of one I think lends credence to that that it's sort of being wedged in there in the hopes that it'll all fit um, and the third thing that I'm concerned about is the the fact that it, it butts up uh, heavily against the the public works garage and the reason for that is um, you know we're considering a charter uh, change that if passed would recommend a DPW. Um, and if that it's, takes place, then the DPW is probably going to need an expanded location. Um, and it would make more sense to allow it to expand on the current site that it has um, without a community center on it, rather than um, then trying to figure out where we're gonna put a, an expanded garage. And then potentially, if we, if we don't have the room for it, um, having to look for a different property as well for, for a DPW garage. So um, I also agree that the middle school site um, is probably a little too heavily trafficked. Uh, that also seems a little bit crowded to me. So my personal preference is um, what the permanent building committee has chosen as their choice number two. Great, thank you, Joe. Any comments from the panelists for discussion? Okay, Renee. appreciate it. Yep, go ahead, Michael. Um, I spoke to Keith Silva yesterday about uh, the possibility if um, if they would need to expand that. Um, they He understood the only concern that he had was the um, salts and the facility behind the senior, existing senior center, if that would remain. But he did not, if they did more, bring uh, the public works department, he didn't see, he felt that it could fit into the current location the way it is, as of right now, just sight unseen without any planning. So just wanted to give a little color on that. Thanks, Michael, appreciate it. Anyone else? Okay, great, thanks, Joe. Uh, Marianne Dempsey, um, I see your hand is raised. You should be able to unmute yourself and you can speak. Hi, everybody. Hi, Marianne. I am in my opinion on behalf of the Council of Agents, not just for myself, okay? So I think at the town hall where it is currently now, I think it's too tight there. It, 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 there's not a lot of room. There's not a lot of outside room. There's so many buildings around there that when our seniors are outside and everything and we have, you know, workers coming in and out and, and so forth, I, I just, we just think that's not a good spot. The middle school, absolutely, I we don't agree with that. There's too much traffic. School gets out at three o'clock. The senior center gets out at three o'clock. Too much traffic. Uh, it's just, it's already a nightmare now with the traffic. So that would just make it worse. So we don't feel it should be there. We do strongly, really, really like the one on Mansfield Ave. Uh, the one where the Remax Center is, that's how I identify it to myself. A uh, lot of space. The water's there, you know, the kayaking, the canoeing, fishing. There's all kinds of great things there. 
we as a, as a board members of the COA really think that is the wonderful choice to go with. That's our opinion. We are the ones at the senior center. Beth is the one who runs it. She knows, you know, more than everybody as to what goes on inside, outside. And we just really believe that's the best place to be. The town hall, too tight. We don't even really want a two-story. I don't think it's necessary for a two-story whatsoever. The seniors, you know, yes, there'll be an elevator there, but a lot of them as well. They can't really get up, walk the elevators. What happens if we lost power and we had seniors stuck in an elevator? That would be horrifying to them. I mean, down that side of town, as we know, power is always lost. So those are my thoughts, my opinions, our opinions, excuse me, on behalf of the COA. Thank you, Marianne. Thank Jeff, you. did you want to comment? Uh, no, I just wanted to uh, thank Marianne for presenting the uh, COA uh, recommendation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, Greg, I see uh, you have a hand up again. Give me just one second here. Okay, Greg, you should be able to speak. Um, I agree with the lady who just spoke about the 116, 120. That seems to be the best location for this for the seniors. Um, the, like I said, it, it'll be, it's still on a main road. Um, it still has the reservoir. It's beautiful. It's relaxing. Um, it, it's what a senior center should be. It should be crammed in with the town hall. So yes, I'm, I'm going with the 4A and the order of reference number two with 4A and two. But I have one question that, that's bothering me. Maybe it's because I'm a little late to the game on this is yeah, the middle school, there's 70, I didn't know there was 72 acres there. I mean, that's a lot, a lot of land. I, I, I now I'm, I'm recollecting at one point we were going to build a new high school there on the same land as the middle school. Um, is there some reason why we didn't go further in the back of that land and build a town hall and a, and a senior center, center there? I, I don't, you know, the town already owns all that land. I don't know. This has probably already been answered, <laughs> but I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Thank you. So, from my recollection, uh, Greg, on that, once you get beyond the soccer fields, it gets very, very wet. Uh, my house actually backs up to the middle school, and I can hear the folks playing basketball right now. And I can tell you it's, it is a wet, mushy area. Um, so Doug and I, I don't know, uh, Bob Medeiros tends to be the wetlands expert around here, I'm sure. Okay. He is the wetlands expert on the uh, PBC and felt that it was too wet in the back. And the reason that we looked at the property that is along um, Route 123 is that it was the site of the old Campbell House. And it is a piece of municipally owned property without having to delve into school property. Okay. Of municipal property, one of the, the options that was considered and ultimately not recommended um, was to place the um, senior center, community center um, in the area where the Yale school and high school are. Um, we met with the uh, with Beth Rossi and members of the uh, COA board of directors, and they felt that the proximity to the school would harm their uh, their human services ability. Uh, there's a lot of sensitivities there with the work that they do, especially with families. Uh, Beth has uh, reinforced numerous times the importance of that that work and having a, uh, a student or student's friends seeing a family member pick up food or gifts um, just sort of went against the mission there and she felt that, that would drive people uh, away from seeking services. So. Um, Greg, did you have anything else? Oh, I need to lower my hand. No, that's okay. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, looks like Marianne wants to have a another opp opportunity to speak. So, Marianne, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. Thank you, Renee. I also wanted to mention about the Reservoir Street property. Now, I'm not saying that this is, you know, a fact. I was informed, somebody told me that that was one-time contaminated land. And it might still be. I don't know this. I did go on the DEP. I tried to do some research on that. And I really couldn't find too much. So really my concern is that 
I think if that was ever the choice, but it doesn't sound like everybody really wants that one. Anyway, is that we might want to check and make sure it's not contaminated because the worst thing is to pick that fight and then find out after the fact. That is just going to set us so way back. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. I just think it should be checked just to be sure. Thank you, Marianne. I, I'm you. sure that uh, those of us having this discussion sure don't want to see a repeat of what happened previously. No. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, Joe. Um, Joe Parker, you should be able to speak now. Uh, thanks. Um, just in the interest of, of open discussion, I was hoping that the someone from the Permanent Building Committee could let us in on their thinking of the order of preference between number one and number two, um, why they preferred uh, site number four over 4A and 2. Hi. Hi, Joe. It's Dinah. Um, Hi, Dinah. Our first preference, you know, was for the creation of a municipal campus. We felt that would make a good center of town. The, the site up on um, Mansfield Avenue was just ideal for passive recreation for the seniors. And it would hold, would hold the building. It could still remain a one-story building, which is what we had presented to the senior community previously. And it would just provide a perfect, a perfect spot for the location. That was really what we were thinking about. Um, Reservoir Street, you know, was very good, and uh, the middle school property was also excellent, but when the board voted, um, that's the way the, the chips fell, and those were our preferences, the municipal campus for the first one, and the second preference for the town hall remaining where it is and the senior center going up on Route 140. Thank you. That's helpful. Thanks, Dinah. Sure. Okay, we do have a question, uh, hand raised from Allison Abreu. Allison, you should be able to speak if you just unmute your phone. Great, hi, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I also liked the um, preference number two, having the senior center or the community center separate and on Mansfield Ave. I think that seems like the perfect situation for a building there for the community. Um, you know, I could see families coming for a community center as well and eating and having picnics out there where they probably wouldn't do that on the other site, site four. It just seems like it can be more parking lot and uh, just not as inviting for people to go outside and, and use the area. Um, that was my big thing. I really agree with everybody else that uh, the reservoir just doesn't quite seem like the right area to have such a public building and the community center putting that in front of the middle school. Um, yeah, it just seems like it would be a really tight fit. And that playground, you know, my kids always went there when they were little and there's not a lot of other places you could put that playground in town that would have the same impact that it does there. So that's just my two, two cents worth. Great, thank you, Allison. Any questions or comments? From the panel. Jack, I think you're muted. I unmute myself yet. There you go. You're good. Um, like Allison, my my kids have played extensively at that playground. Um, it's a one of the few accessible areas in town for the kids, and it'll be uh, uh, sad to see it go. Um, but I'm sure if that is the selection, we would be able to find a way to put something even better back down the road. Thank you, Allison. Um, I want I want to just go back to the uh, the Q and A for a moment. Um, there have been two questions submitted in respect to the Reed and Barton sites. Um, I, I just want to, for a point of clarity. Uh, just to mention that the Reed and Barton site, for those who attended the town meeting and are familiar, um, in the spring of 2019, the townspeople voted against that project at that location. Um, the site was found to have contamination that would have cost the town an undetermined amount of money to clean. So that, that was not considered a, uh, an option. And the Permanent Building Committee, as a result of that meeting, went back, and that's the work that they're presenting to you here. 
So I did see a couple questions on that. So I just wanted to provide some clarity. And then uh, what I'd like to do is ask uh, one of the questions here was to clarify if the community center is built on West Main, um, which is the uh, the order preference number four option there. Uh, would the town hall be rebuilt on its present site without the community center as in uh, the order of number two? Dinah, did you want to speak to that? Yes, uh, the town hall would be built um, hopefully on the parcel that is currently between the existing town hall and the police station. That would allow for future expansion, if needed, to the rear of the existing town hall by the fire department and the taking down of the gymnasium side of the current building and allowing the fire department to move into that area. It would also allow for, if needed in the future, um, expansion into a, a DPW in the back. So the property between the police station and the town hall would still have to be acquired. Great, thank you, Diana. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Um, Jim Slattery has his hand up. Jim, you should be able to speak if you take yourself off of mute. I'd just like to explain to Joe Parker, if he's still on, that um, there was much debate between one and two. Um, I did not vote in favor of that particular order. And I, the majority reasoning for the order was to have a campus type situation. And I agree with most of the speakers tonight that it becomes a very crowded situation with traffic and pedestrians. And, and I just don't think that the town's ready for a crowded campus town area. So the option two was my option one, but, um, I don't win all my battles, so I accepted the majority. I still believe in majority rules, so that's the reason why uh, one was number one and two is number two. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, uh, there's a question in the Q&A. Um, if this project is not complete for three to four years, what will the expenses be to make necessary repairs on existing town hall to remain operational until then? And have those expenses been factored in any of these budgets? So I believe this is an outstanding request from the board of the town manager the, and the building inspector have been working on. We'll try to put that together, not just for three to four years, which would be take us to project completion, but also if these projects don't move forward, what does that look like? Um, referring it to the, the cost of doing nothing, and it's not going to be zero. Some of the initial information that dates back to the early 2000s is quite substantial. Um, the entire exterior of the building would need to be replaced. There are structural issues. There is roofing issues. There is um accessibility concerns um we do not have that information we are working on getting it and uh, not sure if we have a timeline on that mr units if you could advise on when you think we'd be able to have some concrete data as suggested by the uh attendee you know we can work on that the last uh, <clears throat> estimates we had I believe, I don't have it in front of me, um, we're around $4 million, um, but the building inspector's concern was that the building does not have the ability to be renovated. Um, so we will work on that. <clears throat> to renovate that the town existing town hall, you're talking about a complete demolition of the entire interior of that building. You'd need to rewire, you need to, um, put in new sprinkler systems, you'd have to add bathrooms, um, you'd have to add on space. Um, you know, as we talked about, we don't have a meeting room in there right now. Um, so there are a lot of issues that would have to be addressed. Um, and my, my logic is when I first started in Norton, we talked about renovating the Campbell House. Well, that's gone now. 
because it just wasn't worth the renovation cost to renovate that house and it was torn down. So it's similar to the town hall, but we'll work on that. And again, that to further Mike's point there, that $4 million does not get you an equivalent building to what's being discussed today. That gets you to uh, a building that is safe and workable for employees and visitors to come in there. Um, sort of the, the bare minimum to keep that going. And that's $4 million that does not necessarily include what you find when you start opening things up. That building is, um, it is a challenging structure that's going to need a lot of work. Thanks for me. All right, thank you guys. Um, I just want to review a question uh, that was answered um, through the chat session for those folks who either haven't looked at the Q&A or have called in. Uh, there was a question in respect to whether or not the seniors were pulled on a preference between a one or two story complex and um, the preference was for a single story structure for ease of accessibility. I know that was briefly mentioned earlier, but just wanted to clarify there. Uh, there's another question on here. Um, Dinah, I'm gonna address, uh, address this to you. Um, the question is, is that there are two parcels to the right of the police station where the owners express interest in selling the parcels. Um, Jim Krause and a member of the senior center took a look at the locations, but they never heard back. And they're just wondering if, if this is no longer an option given the narrowing of the sites um, and noting it's properly zoned would uh, allow for a municipal campus and would also allow for the walking trails in the woods. Thank you, Renee. Um, when the building committee was doing its work back in October, November, December, um, these two parcels were not available for us to review and therefore were not part of our consideration and were not in the group that we did forward to the vote to forward to the Board of Selectmen in January. I believe they have just recently come up and we have not, the building committee has not reviewed these. Great, thank you, Donna. <clears throat> um, there's another question about will these be voted on as three separate line items on the ballot or one project? Um, this is from Zach, and, and Zach, we've had a lot of conversation on this. Um, Jack, do you want to take that? Um, I think the the only answer we can give right now is it's to be determined. I think there's a there's merits to doing them together or individually. Um, I personally go back and forth every day. That is not a robust conversation that we have had collectively um, at one of our meetings, but that needs to happen. And, and Zach, I'll, I'll add to that in preparation for the last meeting um, where we expected these to actually take place. Um, we did ask that warrant articles were put on for almost every option that, that you could see. So we had um, one for the athletic complex of town hall and the community center we had one i believe for town hall community center and then um one each for individual project so depending upon you know obviously timing and, and where the board is at the time uh, we may do the same type of uh, preparation just to make sure that uh, each option is on the, the warrant um and then we can we can move back from there as, as more information and, and comfort is is uh, is known Okay, uh, I see that uh, Jim Slattery has his hand up again. Jim, you should be able to speak if you unmute yourself. To uh, answer the questions about doing uh, repairs to the two buildings, I think uh, in the last two months, we've had a lot of vocal discussion at the selectmen's meetings and during, in, internally in the building committee. Um, there are two consequences of not passing this. Um, I think the chairman had one quote that I will not use, um, but I like the bike the bullet one. Um, the first consequence is um, you're going to put good money after bad into two buildings and you still have two bad buildings. Um, and the second consequence is it becomes a life safety issue because the, the, the buildings aren't uh, suitable for occupancy. And... I will not get any deeper than that. I'm done. Thank you, Jim. Any comments? Uh, just to thank Jim for not repeating my expletive from our meeting. <laughs> Appreciate the restraint. 
Yeah, it is recorded though and available on YouTube. <laughs> Um, Dinah, there's a question on here in respect to uh, if the community center went um, on West Main Street in front of North Middle School, uh, where would the playground be moved if, if it were, were to be moved? Uh, Dinah, you're, you're not unmuted. You're on mute. Unmute? Okay. There Thank you. Go. you. Um, that is not something that the building committee looked into relocating. We did allocate money for its relocation, but we think it would be important to work with the community group that established that playground and find a location that they would feel would be suitable. Great, thank you, Donna. Any other comments before we move on to the next? Okay, Mary Ann, I see you have your hand up again. You should be able to speak if you unmute yourself. I have another question. Um, if for some reason it doesn't pass, the residents just aren't going to go with this project, which I hope they do, but if they don't, what happens with the town hall if not having a use of occupancy or anything like that, uh, in disrepair, uh, dangerous for people that work there, et cetera? And if the state comes around and says, you need to vacate this building, what's the plan for the town hall? I was just curious if there was some sort of a plan if that should ever arise. That's a great question, Marianne. We, we've actually, you know, one of the conversations, and I think Jack mentioned it earlier, um, in respect to when we when we think about the town meeting, we, you know, we've we've been asking for the cost to renovate that building. I think our expectation, and while it hasn't been decided yet, but our expectation would be that we would have an article on the warrant um, that would be after, you know, the the vote for these, because if if this didn't pass, we would have to spend some sort of money. Um, and to your point, if the building were shut down, uh, I would imagine, and uh, Mike, please add in on this, but uh, we've, you know, we've had the opportunity uh, during the COVID-19 um, situation to have employees work from home. That would obviously be a partial solution, but we would have to find something else to have a place where uh, people could come to a town hall to, to do certain processing. Right. And then there again, we're, we're still spending money. Irregardless, we're spending money, whether we do this all new or whether we have to have backup plans and put money into things, we, we still have to spend money. Yep. So like Jim says, I mean, why keep putting you know money into old buildings that all you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on them, and that's basically it. Agreed. Mike, did you want to add to that? Yeah, uh, Marianne, we have, haven't looked at that yet, but obviously... Um, would have to look at renting space, um, you know, in the old Cisco building or um, renting space in Great Woods Plaza. And depending on how much space we were able to rent, we, if we can fit everyone in, we can. If we can't, then we'd have to stagger and do remote work again. That would be awful. That would be awful to have to do that. All right, that's that's all I wanted to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Thank you. Um, there's a question in here uh, in respect to uh, with site one. Um, I think it's uh, option number three, the reservoir streets. Uh, with it being zoned R60 residential, will, will the site be removed from consideration? Dinah, would you like to respond to that? I think at this point in time, it's up to the Board of Selectmen to remove it from consideration. Um, these were the building committee's recommendations. As you can see, that was down on our list. It wasn't our, our first or second choice. So if it's going to be removed, I think it would be by the Board of Selectmen to just opt to not go with that site. I mean, I assume that when you make a decision to which plan you want to address that, you know, you're not going to uh, do ranked voting and, you know. Yeah, then I, I would agree. And again, I think, you know, this, this goes into our decision overall on what are the dependencies um, for mm -hmm. these, you know, each of them has, has something, whether it be the purchase of a property, um, rezoning, you know, what, whatever it might be, there are, there are still other factors that have to be considered. Right. So appreciate that. 
So, Jack, I don't see uh, any other uh, questions coming through and no hands are wait raised. Um, I'll open it up again if anybody does have a question or wants to provide their opinion. Certainly, you can raise your hand or throw a question in the Q&A. Uh, while we wait for any additional questions to come in, I um, just want to thank everybody for a uh, great, lively discussion. Those were excellent questions, good information shared. Um, I feel much more informed for how people are thinking on these. I hope you guys out in the audience feel the same from our end, that you, we've shared important, relevant information um, on these topics. If there's other questions that have come up, um, or, you know, if you're going to bed, brushing your teeth tomorrow morning, uh, feel free to, to reach out, send us an email, um, find me on Facebook, uh, jconway at nortonmaus.com for email, answer everything that comes through, we'll pass it along to uh, Dinah and the team for consideration. Um, I think this has been uh, a very worthwhile exercise from my standpoint. I hope the rest of the, the board agrees and um, look forward to meeting on August 6th since we will publicize as well. And Jack, before we depart, um, I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll if, uh, yep. if folks have an opportunity. Um, the options are presented as in the spreadsheet with uh, the order of preference um, 1, 2, 3, and 4 showing as option 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to launch that um, right now. And if folks can just take that poll before they depart, that would be fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for participating and, and coming to the session tonight. While that poll is running, I will uh, chair would entertain a motion to adjourn the select board meeting. Motion to adjourn the select board meeting. Second. A motion in the second. Uh, roll the vote. Michael? Yes. Renee? Yes. I too vote yes. So our select board meeting is over. Uh, once again, thank you, everybody. I think we uh, we capped out about 55 attendees, which is not too bad for uh, a couple business days worth of notice. This meeting has been recorded and will be shared on Norton Media Center. So feel free, tell your friends, have them take a look, watch, get informed, and uh, reach out to us with their opinions and any questions that they have. Um, we want to make sure that people are comfortable with how this process is going forward. Uh, openly, honestly, uh, as transparent a way as we can, as in our mind, and as the only way to be successful in town. Thank uh, you, Jack. So we have 75% who voted. We have uh, nine more. If uh, folks can vote, the panelists should be able to vote as well, although I don't see an option for myself to vote, so Jack, you may not have one either. I did, and then it went away. But, um, or on the topic of panelists, I would like to thank uh, uh, Matt Wells, Dinah O'Brien, Michael Veros for their time tonight and sharing their knowledge and expertise with us. Uh, great job. Really appreciate you guys pulling that together. Uh, without spoiling the poll results, it looks pretty one-sided. <coughs> Number two. <laughs> We're at 82 percent. If if we get to 90, Jack, I think we can share the results. All right. Well, I don't think the seven people who haven't voted. Are, it might it might be the panel. I think it might be us. So I think I'll be. Yeah, I think I think we're good. Now, uh, Michael said he didn't vote. Well, he's he's mouthing it, but he's on mute. All right. Uh, so the results of the poll. Um, the clear winner, uh, option two, 70 East Main Street for Town Hall, and the Mansfield Ave option for Community Center, uh, followed distantly by the Municipal Complex option for number one. Um, we got a couple of votes for Res Reservoir Street and um, none for option four down the bottom. So that's, uh, I think that's what we call a statistically significant result. So, 
Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording. The recording has stopped. I think we just need Karen for a second um, once folks drop Jack. I see she's back on, but I don't know if she's actually on. It was a good meeting. That was great. Very good information. I'm screenshotting the poll results so that we can have that for reference in the future. Yeah, good, great questions, good ideas. Um, I think a lot of those things reinforced the, the direction that the process is going. So, it's, uh, it's nice to see. Did you get it, Jack? The survey? Yeah, I have it. Okay. Did you get showing 100%? Uh, no. It, it just, it, I think it just changed yeah, as, as people are dropping. Yep, it did. Okay, I'm going to end the polling. Great. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank, Thank you all. all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll be back soon. Oh, there it is. Cool. Oh, I hit a button. It worked. Yay. <laughs> Looks nice. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, wow. I did it after I hit the record button, but Jack has a snapshot. Yep. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Thank you. Bye. 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 And I can end the meeting. Okay. Oh, look, you're back. Oh. Night, Donna. <laughs>